When I first came to these islands uh, to do my research, I saw S. Vedra from Formentera, and there's something about that place that, that just draws people to it. I haven't spent nearly as much time on these islands as Nate has, but he's definitely right about S. Vedra. There's something about it. When you see it on the horizon, you just want to be there. You want to get to the summit. And tomorrow, we're actually going to have a rare opportunity to do that. The island is closed to the public, but we've got permits to try and reach the summit and photograph the lizards there. But it's not going to be easy. We don't have a boat to get us out there, so we're actually going to have to swim out while Amanda paddles the kayak with all of our camera gear and other equipment. And it's about two miles each way. And um, we've looked at the weather. We're hoping it's going to be good. Um, the water's really deep out there, too, so we might see some interesting things along the way. And this island has inspired tons of crazy myths, including the myth that it's the tip of the ancient sunken city of Atlantis. Uh, additionally, some people say that it was the place where Odysseus was seduced by the sirens. There's no question that this island inspires people. And the first part of the climb up to the top of Esvedra, you have to go for about an hour through incredibly dense vegetation. And this vegetation is incredibly sharp. As you're walking through it, it's cutting you, it's tearing your clothes. Uh, and the gravel beneath you is slipping away. There are no established trails to the summit of Esvedra, and so we're actually going to have to follow goat trails. There are wild goats on the island. They were introduced by humans a few hundred years ago. And once you get past that vegetation, you arrive at a huge cliff, and you have to follow that cliff until you get to a certain point. Now goats can cover some pretty gnarly terrain, and we're going to hope that the goats lead us in the right direction. And there's only one spot on the entire island that you can climb up that cliff face uh, without a rope. We're hoping the climbing doesn't get too technical because we've got a lot of gear with us that we need to get to the summit. But once you climb up to the top of that section, you're in this enormous valley that's created uh, almost entirely of this really soft gravel that you're slipping around on the entire time. And you're heading up that for another few hours until you finally get to the top. I can't wait to get to the top of Vedra. We're going to see Vedra now and Ibiza and Formentera off in the distance and really see the entire archipelago unfold in front of us from one of the highest points on the islands. The first time I went to Espedra, I didn't know what the lizards were really going to be like. And when you get out there and you see these lizards, they're completely different from any of the other populations. I see the lizards on Espedra are my favorite population of lizards, and I can't wait to go out there and photograph these lizards for our book. Tomorrow is definitely going to be one of the most intense days of our expedition. But from the way it looks here, it's going to be a pretty awesome adventure. When we get to the summit, we want to photograph the lizards really well for our book, but we also want to show you what we're seeing when we're at the summit. National Geographic let us borrow a GigaPan, which is a device that uses a compact point-and-shoot camera and a robotic swiveling head to take dozens of photographs, and then we can stitch together those pictures with software later to create an enormous image that you can explore and really see exactly what we could see when we were up at the summit. While the credits are rolling, we want to give a very special credit to Mariana Hubbard, whose generous contribution to our project was critical for making our expedition a success. Thanks, Mariana.